What's up YouTube? Chris and Kevin here from Bitcago and today we're going to talk about Bluezell, which is a database blockchain technology. Uh, Bluezell started out in 2014 as their own company working with enterprise-based companies in implementing different blockchain technologies. Um, one, one thing to call out which is interesting is that they've worked with several large banking institutions across the globe and HSBC being one of the bigger ones that touches us here in the United States, um, around using Ripple, Ethereum. So these banks that are getting interested in using these technologies, Bluezell has been a part of introducing that to them. And then last year, in 2017, they started out um, raising funds to put their own blockchain technology out to replace some of the centralized internet components of managing big databases. Um, one thing to note is that there is a chart on their website that shows different components that will help make a decentralized internet. And the way that they see themselves falling into that is by rivaling Oracle, which many developers out there, like Chris, already know a lot about Oracle and how different websites and um, different networks across the internet use that to store information right now. Bluezell wants to be the decentralized version of that and integrate into some of these other solutions. Um, but, you know, how do they want to go about doing this? You know, what do they want to do differently? Yeah. So, so Bluezell, uh, like we said, is this decentralized uh, database. So, as of now, what you have is you have, you have these centralized solutions, and that means that there's some computer out there, a server, and it, it has a database on it. So, basically, just some data on a hard drive. And it has that out there. And usually what will happen, especially if you're using like a big cloud platform or if your enterprise is, is a large enterprise, you'll replicate your data. So you'll take that hard drive and you'll replicate it in many different regions, whether it's across the United States or across the world, wherever it may be. Um, but you, you generally want to replicate your data. Usually for backup purposes, sometimes you can do different things in terms of uh, accessing uh, different uh, different data, or sorry, different uh, like backups, if you will. Um, so you can kind of write to different ones if you want. Um, but that's not a big deal. So the <clears throat> the decentralized solution is a little bit different, and this is totally new technology. Bluezell is kind of entering into uh, wild territory here. They're really blazing a new path, and it'll be really cool to see if they can get this to work. Because if they can get it to work, it's going to be really the first of its kind. So. So what they're doing is they're saying, okay, well, we ha we have this model now, but there's a couple there's a couple issues with it that they see, and the biggest thing is kind of the thing that we hear about all the time is you have these big organizations that are getting hacked and people are losing all their information, and you hear about it all the time. Three hundred thirty million people just lost their information, you know, because company X Y Z was just hacked, and you know people get scared by that because, you know, you. You go and you shop on a website, and you think you can trust these big organizations, and they just don't—they don't manage the data very well. So, so the decentralized model is that uh, Blue Zell is saying that they're they're taking this idea of swarms, um, and they're kind of running with it. So, what they're doing is they're taking all the data that you have, and they are splitting it up. Within a, within a swarm, so a swarm is just like a group of computers, if you will, and each of the computers has, again, a hard drive and, and their database software running on it, and your data is going to live on, on each of these computers within a swarm. And for a given table, if you're familiar with, with databases, a table is, is kind of a set of data. And what they're saying is that that data within that table can kind of be split up within a swarm. So not any one computer will have all of the data um, that you're storing. And then what they're saying is that they can also do this replication of data uh, across different swarms. So, so very much like the current model now where you have hard drives which are backed up across many different computers and regions, you can do the same thing with swarms. So, so what they're offering is they're offering really kind of increased and, and uh, highly private data storage because if, if a node is attacked and it's hijacked, there's only a small subset of your data that's really compromised. And although that's not 
great. It's not ideal. Obviously, you would want zero data compromised. It's better than what's happening now where you have all of the data compromised. And uh, that's really the big win in this system is, is privacy and security. They also tout a couple different things. They're saying that the, uh, the technology that they have is more efficient and it scales real well. And I think they are probably true in, I think those statements are true in some regards, but maybe a little misleading in others. Um, and this is without understanding their full implementation, because again, like I said, a lot of this is, is experimental, it's brand new technology, so they may prove me wrong and hope they do. But um, one, of the, one of the big wins with, with the databases now is that there's a, a thing called indexing. And through indexing, you're able to kind of quickly look up uh, records within your table. And that's very fast because it's all within one hard drive and you have a CPU, you know, generally with a ton of power and that can access these records very quickly and return them. Um, with BlueZell, one of the problems is that you have, you introduce network lag because since your data is replicated across many different nodes, uh, you have to make net network requests to go get that data. And now BlueZell is saying, okay, well, you can do a lot of this stuff in parallel and, and you're going to be able to, to you know, grab it very efficiently. But again, you know, anytime you introduce the network and, and the internet, there could be issues. So again, this is highly experimental technology. I would love to see it work because this is, this is really exciting stuff. I, I'm going to be interested to play with it once they release their public APIs, but I think it's potentially a little misleading depending upon where it all ends up. So, so we'll see what happens there. But again, really neat stuff. They're really pushing the boundaries. Um, the way that they have their system set up, they, they have their own token as well. And uh, they have some, they have a unique way to provide value there. And I think we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a different, different video. Um, but, they're, they're in this developmental stage right now, which is the same as a lot of other projects that we've talked about. And uh, in their white paper, they've kind of outlined where they're going with it. And I think, I think this year we're going to start to see some of that beta software hit the ground. Uh, and people are going to start to build dApps with it. Um, and then their kind of outlook for it is to eventually become as big as Oracle and really hit these huge enterprise corporations as, as these enterprises really start to embrace, you know, decentralized technology. So, so it's going to be, it's going to be fun to see what, what they do here. Um, they've got a lot of different uh, partnerships that they've mentioned as well. Uh, so if, if they can keep kind of going the course and, and proving out the technology, I, I think, you know, they could have a real winner on their hands, you know, depending upon, uh, some of the, the technology problems that, that they can solve or, or not. Yeah, and we uh, we had made a very early video on Zilliqa, and they see themselves working side by side with technology like that. And, and we've talked a couple of times about how we like to look into ways that miners and people who want to offer up their computing power can benefit from this as well. You know, they, they provide all these things for their clients, but what can some of the people who want to you know, work alongside of this project, get out of it. And they refer to their mining group as producers or farmers, and they're going to take different components of a computer. And one thing that's really interesting is that they're not going to use any GPU power, but they're going after CPU power, um, which is going to help power some of that network Chris just talked about, memory on a computer, uh, permanent storage, and network connectivity. So all those components of a computer that we don't really talk that much about when it comes to some of the other mining and resource delivery that, like Sonam, what we talked about in one of our recent videos, is going to take from your computer. So it's going to be interesting to see how they reward people. We don't have a lot of information on that just yet. But much like all the other projects, it takes a network of nodes, a network of computing power in order for this to work. So that's something to keep your eye on as well. And, uh, you know, we're going to put some other information together in another video of of tying in all the loose ends for, for BlueZell and what you're going to see as far as their ecosystem that they're setting up. But make sure to check back soon for some of our, our next videos and like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks.